Today's daf is daf Lamed Ches in Yevamas, as we learned for a four Shlema, for Yosef Azriel ben Chai Michal and Elazar ben Reuma. Says the Mishnah, Shemer Siyavim Shinaf Lan Achasim. What are we dealing with? Shemer Siyavim is a woman whose husband died, Ruvain died, they had no children, and now <clears throat> Leah, the wife, is waiting to see what Shimon will do. Will Shimon perform Yiv Morchalit? So she, she's sort of waiting. She's a lady in waiting to see what her husband will do. She's hoping, you know, for some quick resolutions. We'll see. He's supposed to deal with it as quickly as possible. In any case, here we get into this problem. What happens if she inherited some uh, assets while she was the Shemer Siavim? Now, the rule is that if she inherited uh, stuff while she's married, while she's married, that's called Nichse Malug, that her husband has the rights to deal with while they're married with no responsibility. In other words, uh, um, if when he dies or divorces her, that stuff goes back to her to her, and to her family, and regardless of its value, it's not written into the Ksuba. But now what happened was this stuff fell to her while she wasn't married. She wasn't married, apparently she wasn't married. She was, her husband, first husband died, and the second husband didn't yet take over. Shimon didn't marry her, she's a Shimon Siyavim. So what happens? So Mada Misham Beis Hillel, that she could do what she wants with the assets. She could sell them, she could give them away, and that holds, that stands, whatever she does stands. That's what Basil and Bishami, they're both moda to this. This is what we're going to talk about. What do you mean? Bishami and they're both moda. She could do with what she wants because she's not really married to anybody right now, right? She has a Zika to the new Yavam, but what's her status? We're not sure. Are we speaking about where she fell from Arison or from the Sun? Meaning, if Reuven, her first husband, was only engaged to her and he died with no children also, that's even because there's Kedushin. So did she, is she in the status now where her husband died while they, her first husband, Reuven, died while they were engaged or while they were actually married? We'll talk about that. So she can do what she wants. Mesa, let's say she dies now. Now this is complicated. In a normal case, husband and wife are married and a wife dies, the husband inherits everything. The husband, the ksuba is given, right? What is the ksuba? The obligation to give her money and other assets can be called nirsait son barzal if they wrote it into the ksuba that he's responsible for them. That's if he divorces her or he dies. But if she dies, he inherits everything. That's the same the basic Allah in the Torah. I mean, you could change it with a will and all that, but that's Allah in the Torah. That if a woman dies, her husband inherits everything. Over here, she doesn't have a husband. She has a Partial husband, right? Her husband, Reuven, died, and she has, she's waiting for Shimon. So, what happens to everything if she dies? It's not clear. She doesn't have a husband. So, what happens? They're each like a suffix. If there would be a husband, the Yoshia Baal presumably is Shimon, the husband. There's a Shiloh about that. We'll see later on in the Gemara. Yoshia Baal simply means if he, if he had other relatives, but let's assume that it's the Yavam. He's also a Yoresh. He's a brother of the the cease of Ruvain. So now she dies. So they split it. He doesn't know it's a suffix what to do. So you split the husband and her family. Let's say she has uh, brothers, Yersheav, her fa- the inheritors, the, the heirs of her father. Let's assume her father died because it says she must enough on a chasm. The chasm could come from her father. She could have received a, uh, her uncle may have died and left her something, whatever, you know, but let's assume uh, her brothers, Yersheav. So Beishamay says you split it because she's not really married and she's not unmarried. So you're not split between the Yavam, that's the that's the Yarshe Abal, the Yavam, who hasn't married her yet, and let's say her own brother. Let's say her own brother. And we'll talk about later. That's another issue. As we said before, if she's married, the husband inherits everything. If she doesn't have a husband, then it goes either to her family or to her children. There's no issue of before there, but we'll talk about that. That's so, so that, what does Ksuva what have to do with anything? Pardon? How does what does Ksuva have to do with anything? She died. She doesn't get the Ksuva. Oh, oh no, the Ksuva from her first husband. The the Ksuva that that the Ksuba that the that the first husband had promised her. Right? Let's say there was a Ksuva of a million dollars. Right? She Not died. Circles, right? You don't. So you don't have a Ksuva. Huh? When, when she dies, she gets a Ksuva. Not not when, she dies, not when she dies. What happens? Oh, to he that died. No, no, no. The, the ksuba is when he dies, she gets it. But over here, over here, the yavam sort of takes the place of the Baal. And in any case, in any case, if she dies, 
if there is a husband, the husband gets it. And if there is no, uh, if the husband uh, or the husband's heirs get it, his children, or in this case, his brother got it. He had no children. We're talking about a case of Yibam. So the Reuben had no children, but his brother would have gotten it. Let's say, let's his brother, his brother Shimon. So when we say over here, Yachloka Yorshe Abalim Yorshe Av, right? What does that mean? The Yorshe Abal with Yorshe Av. And we're going to see the Gemara is going to change the, in terms of the Ksuba. You're right. You're asking good. What does is, what is her family have to do with the Ksuba if she dies? The husband gets it. So the, the Gemara is going to come out from here in the Mishnah. You don't see it. Over here we say, what's, what happens to her Ksuba and the Nisit Muluk that fell to her? What happens to that? So Bishama says, Yachloki Yoshe Abal and Yashav, it's really only going on the Nisit Muluk. You're right, Rumi. You understand? Because the, the, the Ksuba belongs to the husband's family, as we'll see. And Basil says that the Fairish, Basil Omer, you leave them where they are. There's two ways to learn this, but the Pashim Shat, the way Rashi learns is that he's going to explain now what does that mean, Bechazaka? Ksuba, Becheskes Yarshi Abal. If a woman dies, the husband's not obligated to pay the Ksuba. He keeps the Ksuba himself. He doesn't have to pay her anything. She's dead. He inherits everything, right? So, Ksuba, Becheskes Yarshi Abal. Nechasim, Anachnasim, Yotzimah, the Nechasim, the Lug that she got from, that she brought into the into the wedding, or that she inherited while they were married, that were not written into the ksuba, the yoshav. So that goes, let's say, to her brothers. So Basil is quite clear as to what happens to the ksuba and to the nechse melod. Beishamai seems to say yachloko on everything, but the Gemara is going to correct that, and the Gemara is going to say, no, when Beishamai says yachloko, he's only talking about nechse melod. Nechse melod, he says, it's a suffix because the husband is the, there is no husband. The Yavam is sort of taking the place of the husband. It's like a suffix. He's partially the husband. So therefore, he splits it with her family. Whereas Basil says very clear, no, no, no. Her, hers is hers. Her fam, the Nifsim Muluk belonged to her family. And therefore, he keeps that. And the Ksuba belongs to the husband's family. That's what the Mishnah says in Basil. Now we're going to talk about the Gemara. talk about it. And so once he marries her, this is a general rule. The Yavam, once he marries her, Harei Kish She's like his wife in all aspects. But who pays for the ksuba? The ksuba has to come from the nechasim of the first husband. Remember, he inherits, the yavam inherits the, the, his brother, the first husband. So, uh, so from, from that, from his assets, you pay that. If he doesn't have enough assets, if the husband left very little, then the, uh, the yavam has to make up the minimal ksuba. But once he's married, we say once he's married, in the sense that if he divorces her now, all you need is a get. Once he consummates the marriage, once the Yavam marries her and he divorces her, uh, he has to give her a get. No chalitza anymore because he married her. Chalitza is only if he didn't marry her, right? Or if he gave her mimer, you need to get and chalitza. Also, let's say he's not a Kohen. Let's say they're not Kohanim. And Ruben dies, no children. Shimon marries her, the Yavam. Now he divorces her. Can he take her back? So we'll see in the Gemara, you could take her back. You could divorce her if you're not a Kohen. You could divorce your wife and take her back as long as she didn't marry somebody else in between. So we'll see that all in the Gemara tomorrow. Says the Gemara, What's the difference in the Reisha? There's no Machlok between Vesham Meisil. He said if she got, if she, and the Chassam felt her, assets felt her while, while she's a Shomer Siyavam, right? So there, there's no Machlok. She could do with her what she wants. Vesham Meisil both agree. She, can, she, has, she has free rights. Not like a woman who's married, a woman who's married, even if she brings, if she has assets, she just can't go and sell them without her husband's consent. They both have rights in it, as we'll see. So what's the difference? Between, so why, but in the ratio, there's a machlok from Shavit Hill. And the Seifa, the Shammai and Basil disagree about what to do with the Nechsim Mulug. So Ula, so we're going to have three or four different opinions. Omar Ula, Ula says, Reisha denaf lakshi arusa. The Reisha is speaking about what she fell when she was unrusa from her first husband. She only had engaged, she was only engaged to Ruben. And, and uh, she was only engaged to Ruben. And if she's engaged, she's uh, she's only engaged, so maybe she does have rights. But Shammai says over there, if she's only engaged to her husband, she could do what she wants with it. So, and the Seifa is speaking about where she felt when she was married. In other words, when she was fully married to Ruben and now he died. So what's the difference now? After all, she, either way, she's a Shemar Siyavim right now. Right now, the husband's dead, right? And she's waiting for Shimon. What's the difference? The bond of an Arusa, meaning of an Arusa who she was engaged to Ruben and Ruben died with no children, Zika's Arusa makes her like a Suffolk Arusa. Suffolk, we don't know if she's going to perform, perform Yibam or Chalitza. 
So is she like engaged to, if, if the Yavim Shimon is taking Reuben's place, Reuben was only engaged to her. So what is Shimon's status? Sort of Suffolk engaged to her, right? So that's really a weak, it's a very weak Suffolk Arusa. And, and we're going to explain you know, what that means. Zika's Nasua, but if she fell when she was married to Reuben, and Reuben died after you're married, makes it like a Suffolk, it's like she's partial, like she's the question if she's married. Zika's Arusa, Osa Suffolk Arusa, he explains now. The Zika of an Arusa whose husband died while they were engaged makes her like a Suffolk Arusa. It can't be a Vada Arusa, if she's for sure engaged in, Modem Basil, Shemacheres from the Senate of Kaim, would Basil in the Bresha admit? That the Tabeshama, she could do whatever she wants with these assets. By the time we learn, let's say <clears throat> Leah and Reuben got engaged, Kedushin, and now she got some assets. Beshami says, Timka, she could do whatever she wants with them because she's not married. She shouldn't. Lo Timka, she shouldn't. But they're both based on kind. Whatever she did, it, it stands. Whatever she did stands, but she should. So what do you see? Basil holds that if she's Vade Arusa, you're not supposed to look at Hilla. She shouldn't. She shouldn't sell her assets. She should wait and you know deal with the ask her husband's consent at least. She shouldn't do what she wants. So in in the beginning of our Mishnah, where Basil says as also much she could do what she wants. Obviously, it's only a Suffolk Arusa. It's, it's not a body Arusa. Okay, Elishmamino Zika Sarusa Shemachnasakai. So Basil wouldn't agree in the beginning of the Mishnah if she's body Arusa. Elishmamino Zika Arusa also Suffolk Arusa. So what is a Suffolk Arusa? It's something because the fact that she still needs chalitza, she's somewhat attached to the guy. You understand? She was engaged to Ruvain. Ruvain died. What is her status with Shimon, the brother? Right? She, she's a Shemer Yavam. He's the potential Yavam. But it makes it only like a Suffolk Arusa. So therefore, if she if she received any assets at this point, she could do what she wants, even according to Basil. Zika's Nasua, also Suffolk Nasua. Let's say she was fully married to Ruvain and he died. Makes it, and now what's her status with? With uh, Shimon, like a, a questionable Nasua. She's a Suffolk Nasua. If she's for sure married, so Beshamai Machloku, Yarshi Abal, and Yarshi Ab, would Beshamai say, as, as Beshamai says in our Mishnah, that if she was in the safe of the mission, says if she died, what happens to the assets? You split them. It's a Suffolk, you know, better to split it. Split it between, let's say, her brother and, and Shimon, the bro- and, and the Yarshi Ab, which would be Shimon, Shim, the brother of her, of her deceased husband. So would Beshama say you split it? If she was body married, she was if if a if a, a Zika of an Asua is like a body, it's like she's fully married to Shimon. So if she dies now, Shimon would get everything. By the time we learn nothing on a chasmishanisis, a low madam she machinas. He could do whatever he wants. She can't do whatever she wants. If she got the chasm, a uh, husband and wife are married, and she she got a uh Yerusha felt her. Guess what? You got a phone call, your great uncle died, and you inherited. A million dollars worth of property. She can't do with whatever she wants. If she goes and sells it, the husband can take it away because the husband has rights in it now. They're married. So it's not body So it only makes a suffering suah. That's how you understand Beishamai. So Beishamai says, why do you split it when she dies? Because it's a suffix nasua. It's only a suffix now. But according to this interpretation, Ula is saying that the ratio is where she fell from Arison. Beshami Besolomoda, she could do whatever she wants with these assets because it wasn't a real strong Zika. A Zika of uh, Arusa is only a Suffolk Arusa. It's very, very weak. The connection is very weak. And the safest, speaking of how she fell from an Asur. So now, Amalei Rabba, so Rabba says to Ula, I don't get you. I don't, if that's the case, why are you arguing about the property itself and after she died, what happened? Lifgu Bechaya. Why did the mission give a case where she died? What happens to him? They should argue if the issue is, is you're not sure what she is, she's a Suffolk Nesua or not, in this case where she's the Shemar Siavim from Nesuan, and that's your issue. Why do you have to have a machlokus after she died? What happens to her chasm? Lift Talk about, it, uh, let them argue about while she's alive. Will the Paris? Does the husband get half the Paris or not? While she's the Suffolk Nesua now, does the husband entitle to the Paris or not? So according to according to uh, Beishamai, you would split it, and according to Beisul, no, you look at where the nechsim milugah, the nechsim milug belong to the husband's to, to her family, not to the husband's family, and you would get it. Rashi says if we take a look at Rashi, even where we are now, Armalei Rabba Leula, 
If the reason is simply because it's better to split it than to give it to the to her brother, let's call it her brother. Why are you arguing about the Gufa the Karkalach and Isa after she died? Why are you talking about after Be- the, the race of Mishnah is before, is, is, uh, before she died and, and the safe is after? Why are you talking about before death and after death? In both cases, you're talking about while she's alive. The oven splits it with her. The Suffolk and the Stuish is a Suffolk. The Luvada Yesua, he would have full rights over it. He could do whatever he wants. Well, the Basil and the Chasm of Chaskasa, the Losh Shakami doesn't take anything because the Chasm are in her family. They felt her from her family and aren't written into the Ksuba. And since the Umid and Akamasis and Misa of the Sefer, Shmamina, you see over here the time of the Beshamai, Beresha, the Mul Chazaki Lamashim di Kama, there's a difference when she's alive or dead. According to you, what's the difference if she's alive or dead? According to you, the difference is, is it a Rusa, is it a Suffolk, is, if, she's, uh, if, he, if she fell um, to Yibam from Arison of Ruvain or from the Suan, so why talk about before death and after death? It's Mashma from the Mishnah that the reason in the Reisha where she could do what she wants is it because she's still alive. Talk about the difference between being alive and being dead. Elo Amaraba, Idivid, Nafalik Shinasua. Don't make that difference. The Mishnah is Dafka speaking about both cases where she fell to Yibam from while she was married to Reuven. Vizikas Nasua, Osa Suffolk Nasua. And according to Beishamai, the, the bond of a Nasua makes a Suffolk Nasua. Reisha, the Ekaima. So what's the difference? I'll talk about what the Mishnah said. In the Reisha, where she's alive, she's Vadi Yorushovi. It's, it's her property. The Nixim look felt her right, while she was a, while she was a Shemer Siyakmavir, right? We're not sure what the husband's status is. It's a suffix, it's Shimon, Shimon, the, the Yavam, who hasn't performed even more Chalitza yet. What is the status of the suffix? But it's for sure her property, right? The Nixim look, she's alive. When she's alive, Reisha, the Ekaima, she's like, she is for sure an heir over here. It's for sure her property. Shah Karen Shalah Rashi says, Mamonav Shach. It's a, whoever's it is, it's for sure hers, right? Because she's alive and she received this property. So it's Vade hers. The Inu Suffolk, he's only a Suffolk if he's going to marry her or not. And we're not sure what his status is right now. Ain't Suffolk must be their body. We had this the other day also. That you don't, a Vade, a Suffolk doesn't take away from a Vade, right? We talked about the other day with Yerusha. If they're body, who's a Vade Yorish, who's a Suffolk Yorish? Ain't Suffolk must be their Vade. Safer, the Mesa, but in the Safer where she's dead. So she's dead. Now the question is, when you're dead, who gets the inheritance, right? That's how the life works. When people die, there's assets, and who do the assets go to? Uh, safer, the maze where she died, Halal the Yorish Ravash. The husband, Shimon's coming to the Yorish. Let's call it Shimon and her brother. Her brother coming to Yorish. So each one has a same, the same claim, right? The husband, the, the Shimon, the Yavim says, I'm like her husband. The other one says, no, you're not like your husband. And if you're not like the husband, who gets who inherits her? Her, her family, her brother. So therefore, they split it. Pardon? No, he didn't marry. We're talking about that. She's a Shemir Siam. She's waiting. So that so it's a suffix. So Shimon says, I'm I'm like her husband, and I should get it. Her husband died. He's not. Okay, he's not. But that's our question. Uh, that the Zika of Yava makes it like a suffix marriage. If she would, if he would be married to her, he gets everything, right? Right, but Rumi, we know that famous case in uh, in the Wahlberg family, right? Let's not talk too much, but uh, right, we know the case where the husband took everything. Yeah. Where we the no case many times choice. where a woman a woman was an almana and she had three children and all she had was her her house and then she married another guy, a guy with a black hat and everything. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. And then she died. She got sick and died. And when she left, she thought she was leaving her house at least to the to the children. He took everything. Okay. He didn't have a will. Obviously, he didn't have a will. He didn't have a, he didn't, a, he didn't have a proper will. He didn't have a proper will that she didn't have a she proper didn't have, will. She didn't he have. didn't have a proper will that would have precluded her husband taking everything. Correct. Okay. Ace and why does the will work? The will works because it takes effect before death. That's how that will works. Okay. Ace bio. So now we have we had a lose opinion and we had Rabba's opinion how to learn the mission. Now we're gonna have another other opinions. Ace Abaye. So you say that's the reason. In other words, you're saying that the reason why the Mishnah works is in the in the ratio she's alive. So ain't something that's body. In the safer, she's not alive. So they're both equal. They both have equal claims. Uh, is it really true that Beishami holds the answer? We learn less. Not all of of it. A man had obligations. He had to pay exuba. He had debts, and now and he had no money, and a house fell on him and his father. 
His father had money. Who died first? If the father died first, then the son inherited him, yeah. right? Even if there were other brothers, but he inherited some money. So then he would, there would be money there to pay the ksuba and to pay the balchot. If he died first, right? If he died first with no assets, right? So the balchot and the ksuba get, they get nothing. So enough of us, all of it, or love al Mirshav or other people that he would inherit from, maybe an uncle or whatever. But he loved to pay, he had things to pay. Yoshe Av, the other inherit the other heirs of the father. Maybe he had brothers, right? Maybe he had other brothers. Omrim Haben Mesrish. No, he died first. Of course, they don't know for sure. They don't know for sure, but they but they they are Vade inheritors. They're Vade heirs of the father. They're right, they're Vade heirs of the father. And then the father died. So therefore, they entitled the assets and Bachov gets nothing. Bachov Omer, no, Ha'av Meis Risha. The father died first. In other words, even if there's a split second, if the father died first, the son inherits automatically at death, at death from the father. And then there's money to pay the, the, the Bachov. So Yachloku, they both have an equal claim and they split it. No, 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 no. The, you leave the Chasm where they are. The Chazaka was that the heirs were going to get, they were waiting for the father to die and they were for sure getting the money. Whereas, whereas the Valchov has, has to be adjudicated. Does he really owe the money, etc.? So over here, Valhocha Yorshea Vadai. They are Vada Yorshim, right? They're standing to, to, raise, to get the money. They're for sure sons. Valchov is a suffix. We don't know whether Lohuksikushtaro Allah, we don't know he's got adjudicated. And uh, he's coming as he's coming as a suffolk because he's suffolk most of the body, and you say he split it equally. So how could that's what and that's what Beishami says? Beishami says he split it. So you see that what that a suffolk is most of the body. The answer is Beishami star amelikos gavadami a star which is standing to be collected as if it's collected already. In other words, the balchov is the same status of muhsak as the orshim. After all, right now when the father is alive, before the house fell in, before the building collapsed. Nobody has any money yet, right? You know, uh, but it's like they're both muhsik. In other words, the claim of the other sons of the father who died that there are muhsik in it and they are a muhsik, they're, st they're standing to collect it, is equal to the claim of the Balchol that he's standing to collect the money from for his star or the woman for her tsuba. And therefore, how do we know? Pardon? Nobody, according to Beishame, nobody. They both need to split it equally. Basil says you leave them where they are. The chasm b'chaskasan, leave the money, the assets of the of the uh, father belong in the father's family. You leave them where they are. But Beishamai says you split it. So you see, Beishamai says that even a suffolk takes away from Vada. The answer is they're both Vada. They're both equal over here. They're not. But how do we know Beisham? Why? Because a star which is standing to be collected as a valid star is as if it's collected already. So the Bachobas is, 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 is as much a muhsik in these assets as the Yorsham of the father are. How do we know that he says, Here's a case like this. A woman is a sota. What's a sota? A sota is a suffix sota. A husband warned his wife, don't seclude with that man, right? And let's say there were two Adam that he said that, and then there were two Adam who saw them go into seclusion. They didn't see the act, because then there's nothing to talk about, and she has to leave, you know, and all that. But she went into seclusion. What happens then? He takes her to the Bezdin in Yerushalayim and to the base of Mikdash, and to drink the water, right? To drink the water to determine whether she committed adultery or not. Let's say at that point, he dies, the husband dies. So Mesu Balein, if the Balein means of Sotas, if let's say he died, they didn't get a chance to drink. What happens over there? Beishamai says, no, they take the Ksuba, Banish as well. If, uh, you know, if she, if she is, uh, if she admits that she committed adultery, she doesn't get a Ksuba. If they were saw him in the act or, but over here it's undetermined. So she says, well, if if you if, if, if can't you can't drink now, the husband's dead. So she takes the ksuba. So long or no? Oshos, so long or no? Either they drink or they don't take the ksuba. What do you mean, oshos? So you want oshos? What do you mean? She can't drink now. Maybe Hashem said that he has to bring his wife there. If he's dead, she can't drink. He can't bring his wife there. He's dead. Because she can't drink. So we have machlokus here. Does she get her ksuba or not? The husband died. So she was, the case was never resolved whether she committed adultery or not. It's a suffix. So does she get the Ksuba? So says she does. So it says not. the Suffolk, Suffolk and I said, we don't know if she committed adultery or Loza or she didn't commit adultery. And, and the Suffolk could take, take away from the assets of her husband. The assets of the husband will belong to her children, to his children, to his family, right? So Suffolk, it's a Suffolk and she could still get the money from the body. Why does she get it? 
So you see over here also that the star, her ksuba, that she has as if it's collected already. It's not a suffix, it's if she's a body, has a claim there. So therefore, so therefore we said what? Rabba said before that the issue over here is when she's alive, right? The husband doesn't get anything. She can do what she wants because ain't suffering much of the body. When she's dead, they split it. So Mars says, is, uh, is it really true that Beis Shammai holds ain't suffering much of the What about the case of Nafal Afayis, Alav Alav? So he said, no, that's because Shtarim is good to be What about this case here? And, and how does he know that Shtarim is good to be governed? I mean, from this case over here with the Sota, that since she has a Ksuba, it's as if it's collected already. That's what Beis Shammai holds, if it's collected already. This is So why did Abaya ask Akasha? Aisve Abaya Abaya asked Akasha from Nafal Abaya so love I love it. Why did he ask him over here? Over here you also see that what that ain't suffering most of, that a suffix is most of the badai, right? So Dilmik Subas Isha shiny says it could be it's different over here. That over here can you give you the same the same answer? Shtar must go to me. Why did like Rashi says? Why did he go to Baba Basra? Why did he go to the Zikan to ask him Nafal Abaya so love Asha? Why didn't he ask him Sota, which is in Nashim? The same place where where you are right you know, where you are now you're dealing with nashim now why didn't he ask for nashim and maybe ksuba ish is different mishum china because it, when a person uh, in order to um, in order to encourage the women to marry men we 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 are, we're more generous with the ksuba and we say the ksuba is as if it's she collected already so maybe over there you say shtar almost could go with dummy because over there maybe over there the ksuba is just like it's collected. But by uh, but 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 not when it comes to let's say a balcho, and therefore he asked from there. So he says you couldn't ask for shtar me by subasisha is more is stronger because of chain because we want the women to marry. So the list of the mastisim. What about the ksuba in our mishnah where she's dead? You can't say over there because of chain because when she died you don't have that reason, right? In our mishnah and our mishnah. That's what he says. The list from from our mishnah. Right, uh, also said in our Mishnah, what happens to the Ksuba? The Mishnah said, if she dies, what happens to the Ksuba Nechasim? So Beishami over there also says, Yachlok over there, even though where there's no reason of Chain. So why didn't he ask from the Mishnah also? That's a proof that Suffolk must be Vadai. So, um, um, so Beishami doesn't argue in the Mishnah. This is what we talked about at the beginning. Beishami says at the beginning, we said, uh, does Beishami argue also with Beis Hillel? About the ksuba in the Mishnah, because Bashami says, Yachlok, what happens to the ksuba and to the and Yasma? They don't argue. Lo, what do you mean they don't argue? Baktani, our Mishnah said, Mesa, what did our Mishnah say? He's reading the Mishnah now. My Yasm, Ksuba, Yasm, 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 what happens to the ksuba and the Nechasm, and to the Nechasm, Yasm, Bashami, Yachlok, Yashab, Alam, Yashab, they split it. Uh, the the, the Yavim splits it, well, let's say her brother, who they saw him in the Chasm, the Chaskasan. You leave him where they are. Uh, the Nechasm, Yasm, go with her family. And the ksuba goes with his family. So you see, Beishami holds, uh, even in case of the ksuba, they split it. Apparently, it's not hachikoman. Mesa, mayasab, ksubasa, vashavka. What happens to a ksuba? The, and he stops. The, he stops the question there. He leaves it. He doesn't really answer that. Nechasam, nechasam, yotzinima, the nechasam, mulug. There, Beishami says, yachloku, yashabab, yashab. And Beishol says, nechasam, nechasam, leave the nechasam, mulug, with the faz. But everybody agrees, as far as the ksuba goes, that the ksuba stays with the baal. So therefore, they're not really arguing over there. And therefore, why? Because you can't, you can't, uh, you can't accept, you can't a uh, uh, collect the ksuba. Mechaim uh, ksuba is only, you know, while the uh, she can't, she has no claim on the ksuba while the husband's alive, or before, or if he didn't divorce her while he's alive, she has no claim on the ksuba. So therefore, uh, it's only there, the, and therefore the the ksuba belongs to the uh, husband's family. Period. And Bishami Be- agrees with that too. So at the end of the day. What is what's Rabba? So Rabba at this point, Rabba's reasoning stands. He says that the case in the mission is speaking about the race, is speaking about she's alive and ain't suffering most of the day, and other cases of suffering most of it's because it's Sharam Sliba Kagaba dummy. Um, and um, but in the Sefer where she died, where she died, there, uh, there, um, it's Yachloku because each one has a valid claim, but in the Rasha, she has a stronger claim and it's ain't suffering most of the day. And therefore, uh, the the uh, she's a badai, and everybody else, uh, the husbands, uh, the oven is only a suffolk if he, if he really has a has a has rights or a share in her assets. Amar Ravashi, Ravashi says, Masis nami dekets. Masis the Mishnah also that way. What we just explained, the ktani yachloku yorshi abalim yorshi ab, the nixe mulug, which by rights belong to her family. So you say over there, Beishami says, okay, the yorshi abal can also get a share with the yorshi ab. They could also take a piece, meaning by rights it belongs to the husband, to the to her family. It came from her family, but you know what? Since it's a suffolk, we'll, we'll split it and give the husband something also. 
if it would be if we would be talking about the suba where the Baal has the basic right, it belongs to him, then it should say Yarshia Ivan Yarshia Baal. So you see, we're only talking about Nixamulug, not the Ksuba. Beishama is motor to that the that the if she dies, the Ksuba belongs to the husband's family, period. Shmamina. Abaya Omar Abaya says a third way to interpret the Mishnah. Again, we had Ula at the beginning, he says that the Rasha is speaking about where she fell from Aris in the same as speaking about where she fell from the Suim. Then we had Rava's opinion that the, the, the point is that it, while she's alive, uh, and after she's dead, they're both equal claims. The Rasha is speaking about where the assets fell to her while she, while, after Ruben died. And she's a Shemar Siyavim now. So therefore, she has full rights in it. Safer the nafluk she talked of the bow. The safer speaking about where she got those assets while she was still married to Ruben. Before Ruben died, she got those assets. Because Abaya yada the other. He has. They have an equal rights in it. They have equal rights. In other words, when when the assets fell to him while they were married, uh, uh, it's speaking where she has equal rights. And now that he died, she has the upper hand. She has the upper hand, right? Because her husband died. If the assets fell to her while she was married still to Ruvain, there the husband has a stronger right than her. Not while they're married, not that they're equal rights, the husband has a stronger right. And therefore, and therefore, when the husband dies, they would be equal. They would be equal in base, right? They would be equal. So Rashi says, why is it Nechasim Cheskasan and leave with the husband? Savarbai and Asu Yada Kiyada. They're equal. Below Yosef, Hilkach Shemais, when the husband Ruben die, Bainli Yavim Ba Elazika, Yada agrees his hand is weaker, and the Nechasim stay with her family. Rava disagrees. Rava says no. When they're married, if she has Nechasim, the Nechasim felt that while they're married, the husband has an upper hand, has an upper hand. Therefore, when he dies, they're equal. And Basil would not say over there that. Uh, the husband, the assets now, when she dies, subsequently go to her family because they should be equal rights there, like Beishamai says, right? So now we have a fourth view. We had a Bayit, we had a Ula, we had Rava, we had a Bayit, now we have Rava. Both assets fell to her while she was, while she, after her husband died, after Reuben died, and she's waiting for Shimon. Reisha, the love of Mimer. Oh, the Reisha is speaking with you, there was no Mimer. There's no mimer yet. Okay, so the Rasha, so she has all she has all the rights. She was a Shemer Siyam. Seifa, the Rav of Mimer, Seifa speaking about before the right, before it fell to her, the husband, the Shema did mimer. Uksava Rava, mimer lebeishamai, according to Beishamai, Osavari Ramesu Kavari Arusa. And that's why you understand Beishamai that they split it. Osavari Arusa, right? The Suffolk Nesua. She's a Vade Arusa and a Suffolk Nesua. Vade Arusa lives us with Sarah. Remember, Beishamai said once she's, once uh, he did mimer, once Shimon did mimer, and let's say there's a sister, the sister's pushed away, right? If there's an achosi, she comes along, she's pushed away, pushes away the tzara, and she's and she stays married to, uh, he stays married to this one. In other words, even though mimer's only a suffix, but Shamuel's mimer makes her like a vade arusa. And if now, let's say another, there, there was another tzara there, she's out of the picture, right? If she, another tzara felt it, she's out of the picture. So if let's say another brother died and it was his sister, whatever, no, it's not Chotz uh, Kukoso because she's already married. She's considered married. He's considered married to this uh, this one that he performed the mimer on. So Bari Arusa, Lichos Betzar, Vesafik Nesu, Lachot Menachosim. Beishami says, you know what? He did mimer. Therefore, the Rish is speaking about where he didn't do mimer, so she has full rights. The Seif is speaking about where Shimon did mimer on the uh, on the Avama, and then assets fell to her. So you know what? She he gets he has equal rights in the Nechosim. And that's why Beshame says, if she dies now, you split it because he has equal rights. Beshul says, no, it doesn't do Maimu doesn't do that. She has no right, it's a Nechosim. And the Nechosim will still belong to her family. They said the name of Blas are like Rava, that the difference is we did Maimu or not. Beshame holds Maimu, makes it like a Suffolk Nesuin and Badai uh, Arison. There was, it was said, name of Israel like a Baya. Does more mere Mablaz or Hachid Rablaz really say like uh, like Rava? As we said, Mishra Allah Zakar Rava, Baum Rablaz or Maimel Beshame Enokona El Lithos Bitsara Bulbat. All it does is it pushes away the Tsar, but apparently it doesn't do anything but a chasm. So Apik will switch around. Say Rablaz did like a bayan, Rasul Kanina did like Rava. Be by same Lola Motiv, don't switch it around. Amal for Rablazer, Rablazer will say, Kia Mariana, when did I say that Maimer coin to Beshamai just pushes away the Tsara, the Losagalov again? It pushes away the Tsara. Oh, it doesn't push away the Tsara. 
but you still need, again, you need to get in addition to the chalitza, but it does that much. Ella de boy nami Ella de boy nami you need chalitza in addition to the get. In other words, I say, it's when I said the losagi get, when I said it pushes away the tsar, but it's not a full marriage, because you still, it's not enough to give her get, you still need chalitza. Lachat ben chasim de lokani miyami, did I ever say that she's entitled, uh, that 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 uh, makes it so much that uh, he's talking about the nechassim? I wasn't talking about the nechassim. So therefore, Rabbi Lazar, when the Gemara says it, my mishmei de Rabbi Lazar kavasi de Rava, I never, I never was talking about that mishmei de Rava, meaning that he's entitled to the nechassim. I didn't say that he's not entitled to nechassim or not. I wasn't talking about that. Literally, my husband will I never said he's not entitled to nechassim because he isn't entitled to nechassim. The army, Amr Papa, do you get a maslis and kavasi de Baya? So we had four opinions in the Mishnah. How do we interpret this difficult Mishnah? We had Ula, we had Abaye, uh, we had Ula, we had Rabba, we had Abaye, and we had Rava. So Rapapa now says, you know, the Mishnah is more mashma like Abaye. Bafak of the Kasha Mesa, even though, why did it have to give the case of Mesa, which we'll explain in a sec, that why is it mashma like Abaye? Mishnah says, what happens to Nechasim that go in and out with her? What does that mean? Uh, what happens to those Nechasim? What happens? My yasim b'ksubas and nechnasim nechnasim yosima. What does nechnasim yosima sound like? My nechnasim and my yosim. Lav nechnasim l'shus abal. They came into the shus abal because she was still married. The nechnasim came to her while she was married to Ruvain. The yosim l'shus abal and l'shus ab, and they leave l'shus abal to the l'shus ab. That sounds like like Abaya's interpretation of the Mishnah. What happens to the nechnasim that she received while she was married to Ruvain? Bafik of the kosher mesa. Even though according to Abaya, why did it have to say the case of mesa? Like, like the question that Rabbah asked on Ula, why talk about the Gufa Lachemisa, Ula Paris? You could argue about during her lifetime, and the Machlokas should be about the Paris, but even though that's a little bit of a Kasha, the stronger shot in the Mishnah, the Lashon of Mesa is a little bit different. Why didn't they have to give the case of where she died about splitting it? That Beshami says, When she died, you split the Nechassim. You could have said when she was still alive and you split the Nechassim. And the issue here is, is what, what, once the husband, uh, while she, where the husband died, she received the Nechassim, the Nechassim looked like a vice while she was married to Reuben. Now the Reuben died, what happens to those Nechassim? What is the what is the answer that, that Beshamai says you split it and Basil says no it goes to uh, to her family but why did you have to talk about Mesa you could have talked about when she didn't die and you're just talking about what happened to the Peros while she's Shomerasi of him to Shimon she got the Nechassim while she was married to Ruvain and now the Ruvain died what happens to during during uh, during that time that that, that um, uh, the, 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 does uh, according to base According to Beishama, you split the you split the assets to mean the Paris. And according to Beis Hillel, no, they stay in her family. You could have said it that way too, but still the mission is more mashma like uh, like a buyer. All right, we'll pick them here tomorrow, Mitzchem. Have a good day, everybody. Talk to you.